hey guys, I'm just going to roll this and talk. So in positive psychology back in the day, we did this exercise where we would write a thank you letter to someone, whether send it to them via email or don't even send them, just write a thank you letter. And back then in positive psychology, it was touted as a gratitude exercise, basically practice being thankful. And obviously there's validity slash uses to just practice gratitude, practice being thankful. But recently I've kind of had another way or another tweak of thinking about this. So a lot of you know, I've been going to therapy for basically a year and sometime just slightly after this month, last year, I started getting anxiety and I'm still dealing with it, but it's kind of a lot better. But the beauty of these moments is that it's usually a signal from your body that there's something in your mind that you just need to go figure out. You need to kind of like if some part of your body needs to heal, it's the same thing in here. So I started going to therapy and through doing what's called EMDR, I started uncovering and dealing with a trauma I had in 2008. And I had a really bad concussion in 2008. And you could say I'm still dealing with it. Probably not physically, but definitely mentally, because it altered a lot of my life trajectory. As your brain repairs itself and rewires, sometimes it just aren't the same. You're never the same after a concussion. And I had the concussion while I was doing volleyball. And so as I'm doing EMDR related to this concussion incident, it's digging up all these funny, not so funny, but all interesting memories related to when I played volleyball. It's so crazy. So I played volleyball with this Asian, both basically Chinese. It wasn't just Asian. So it was a Chinese organization in the DC area called CCACC. I don't even know what that stands for, but I just remember CCACC. And basically it was a pressure cooker environment, all these overachieving parents sending their overachieving Chinese kids to a volleyball camp run by a former Olympic volleyball player from China. So first of all, without me even going into more details, you could probably tell it's too much stress, man. At the end of the day, this is what I realized today when I was doing therapy. It's just fucking volleyball. I don't care if I curse once. You can curse once on YouTube and still monetize it. It's just volleyball. But because we're under such a pressure cooker environment, so many straight A students, so many students with dreams of going to the Ivy Leagues, and the coach was on the Olympic gold medal winning Chinese team in the 80s, volleyball wasn't fun. It wasn't a fun experience. It was too stressful. And so one thing led to another. I got a concussion once in volleyball. I'm not going to go through that because I'm going to therapy. I'm learning to reprocess it and build a lot of great things from it. But one thing that sort of came out of all this is that I realized there's a lot of things left unsaid. And this is where it connects to the beginning. You see, there were quite a lot of good people in that volleyball little club I did. Lots of talented people. Lots of people who are under way too much pressure from the coach or from their parents, but they were good, talented people. And I was too young back then in high school and even in college to really express what I want to express to them now. But now after all these years, I can kind of express you're looking back on it. You're much older. And so I quit Facebook in 2020. I don't know if I told you guys, I quit Facebook in 2020. I couldn't do it anymore. And I actually just got on Facebook because that was the only place I knew where I could find some of these people. As you know, a lot of these people are just slightly younger. Um, what do you call us? Gen Y, AK millennials. So if they were Gen Z, I could find them on Instagram. But a lot of these people, the only place you could find them is Facebook. So I got back on Facebook just to do this. All Any person that I wanted, even back then, but now especially as I'm reprocessing some of these memories to say something encouraging or something nice to or thanking them. I'm just writing. <laughs> I don't care if they don't ever see the message. I hope they do. You know how Facebook is with this private settings, but at least I'm putting it out there into 
their their whatever you call it. You know, I'm so removed from Facebook. I don't even know what is it called feed. Is it their messages? Is it their I don't know what it's called, but at least I'm sending them something just to say what I always wanted to say. So at the end of the day, this is just the lesson I wanted to pass on to you guys. Things left unsaid, it's rarely good, but especially when it comes to things of gratitude or things of encouragement. I guess encouragement is another form of gratitude, right? But it's more like gratitude towards their potential, right? That's what encouragement is. So anything that's encouragement or gratitude based, say it to people. And if you don't say it immediately, it's never ever too late. And that's what I realized. I'm just thanking certain people or encouraging people. There was a girl named Sarah. She had a really cool setting trick. And I don't think I ever told her it was cool. And in fact, the coach's daughter was so jealous that she made fun of her. And I told Sarah, I was like, dude, you had one of the most amazing setting tricks. And you know, sometimes the coach and the coach's daughter weren't nice to you, but man, you were talented. And I was just saying these things, these things I always thought and wanted to say, but didn't know how to express back in the day. So it's not just gratitude, right? The positive psychology episode, episode, the positive psychology lesson, that's the word, exercise, whatever, that I did back in college was just a little part. It didn't cover everything when it comes to gratitude. It's not just practicing gratitude. It's think about what in your mind has been left undone or unsaid when it comes to gratitude and do it. Do it. Express it. It'll really help because buried behind that could be other emotions, other things. It's all a knot, right? It's a great analogy. It's all a knot or it's all strings intertwined. And if you could go through with the positive emotions, it's easier to unwind than to go through the negative emotions. For me, through therapy, I kind of went through the negative emotions and then found the positive emotions to unwind some of this stuff. But why not if you just practice gratitude, especially gratitude towards the past, things that, let's say, you left unsaid that you can always go do or go say. Maybe that's an easier way of getting to some of those negative emotions and reprocessing it. So I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense, but it's something that I've been thinking about. And this goes back to a lot of you know in 2020, I almost died, but last minute jumped out of the way in a car that ran a red light, sped by, didn't kill me. So what I never told anyone about except my therapist was that I saw the guy who yelled that day and saved me. I saw him, but... That was around the time when the pandemic started. So everyone was really uncomfortable. Everyone was in a mask. And I wanted to go up to him and say something. But I, first of all, I was afraid of making him uncomfortable. I wasn't too scared. I'm not too scared of all this stuff. But I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable because obviously he was much older. I didn't want to, let's say I was carrying something. I don't want to give him anything. So unfortunately, I didn't get to say thank you. I gave him a look. But I don't know if he can understand from that look that I very thanked him for basically saving my life. So this was one of my regrets because, first of all, he's an older gentleman. I don't know if he's passed away or not. But even if he's not passed away, maybe he's moved away. If I could go back in time, I wish I could go up to him and be like, hey, I know everyone's uncomfortable right now because of this thing that's going around. But I just want to say thank you. You saved my life forever thankful for you. I wish I said that. And maybe just saying that here, hoping he'd see it one day, maybe that's the best I can do because obviously I don't know where he is now. So maybe that's where I end this video.